Good morning. Thanks for joining us today for uh, Stop Diabetes Insight. Uh, our segment today is the month of May. I'm Beth Grant with the American Diabetes Association, and with me today I have Mary Pat McKee. Hello. Thank you for joining us. My Welcome. Thank you. Uh, we're just going to really quick talk about some events that are coming up for the American Diabetes Association. Our monthly support group, which is at our office, um, this month, May 19th, the topic is mental health, and June's topic will be kidneys, um, your kidneys and diabetes. So I've actually, there you go, there's a little more information about it. Um, every third Tuesday is the support group um, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. at our office at um, 8604 Allisonville Drive. If you have any questions, um, go ahead and buzz us in the office and we can um, give you a little more information, 317-352-9226. Uh, we also do a weekly um, diabetes series with Walgreens. It's at the 86th and Michigan location. Um, different topics every week. Give us a buzz if you have questions, if you'd like to know what the upcoming topic is. It is from 6 until 7 p.m. And this week the topic is physical activities and diabetes. Coming up, we also have our camp for children that are living with diabetes, um, Camp John Morville. Actually, the camp is June 7th through 13th, and we are still taking applications for children that would like to attend. So um, go ahead and visit the website that we have listed, diabetes.org forward slash ADA Camp John Morville for more information and to register. Our step out walk, it is um, walk season for us in the office too. Uh, September 19th, join us at Celebration Plaza at the White River State Park. Um, this too, you can check out more information, diabetes.org, Indie Walk. Uh, tour is right around the corner for us, June 20th um, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. If you'd like to ride your bike on the smoothest surface um, in Indy, it, it's um, you know an all-day event. You can just ride around the track, or you can take um, two different road routes that everything starts and ends on the motor speedway. Fun event, um, great time, fundraiser for the American Diabetes Association. So if you'd like more information about that event, it is diabetes.org forward slash indie tour. Now, let's get to our guest. Mary Pat, thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me, and what a great segue for me. We have to thank you, too, for bringing us to HCTV and, um, you know, getting us to be able to ce celebrate, you know, our cause to stop diabetes. And um, we really want to just talk a little bit about the Indie Boomer magazine today and let us know. Um, you've brought the May issue with I did, you. And that's why it was a great segue. Perfect. Your ride, your ride, uh, how did, what was Correct. it? Correct. The it tour. Oh, the tour of the ride or Correct. something? Correct. Tour de Cure is tour at cure. the Indianapolis right. Motor Speedway. I love saying de Cure. De, tour de tour Cure. Tour de Cure. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even say it. That's pretty bad. Yes, we are very, very excited. The May issue is out, and of course, it's kind of hard to see, Good. but that is Donald Davidson on the cover of the magazine at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and in front of a lot of the cars over the years that have been yeah. run at the racetrack. Okay. Next year will be their 100th anniversary, which is pretty it's exciting. Fantastic. Yes, it really is. And uh, one thing we're really excited about with the Andy Boomer magazine as this is our first issue that we will be available on every CVS store in the Marion County and surrounding counties. So if you have a CVS store, please go pick one up, enjoy it. Uh, we are allowing people who are not baby boomers to read it. Okay. Yeah. So you could be younger, you could be older. So baby boomers run from 1964 to, uh, well, I said that backwards, 19, yeah, 1946. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Boomers have these moments in their life where they forget what they're saying. I think everyone but, does. No, it's just boomers. <laughs> uh, but anyway, 1946 to 1964. Okay. Um, but anyway, hope you can pick up the magazine. The magazine, we feature a lot of different um, topics and ideas in it, like travel, money, uh, health, different things, hoping, you know, boomers, all baby boomers are going through different things. Right. You know, some of them are traveling, some of them are worrying about their health, some of them are worrying about their money, um, where they're going to live, that kind of thing. So hopefully right. there's different topics in the magazine that will be, you know, something that... Of interest to everybody. Exactly, exactly. Um, and something that we're pretty excited about as well, in September of, last September, I had asked Patty Spittler to be on the cover of the magazine. And in that situation, what happened was she said, you know, this is kind of fun. Let's do a TV show. 
Great. So we did. And starting, uh, we started March 1st of this year on Channel 8, on Wish, uh, on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. We, Patty, host a show. You will not see me. It's really a good okay. show. And um, anyway, but we have various reporters um, that, that help. It's it's set up very much like, have you ever seen the CBS Sunday Morning Program yes. with Charles Osgood? Yeah. Um, where Patty's the host, and then Grace Trahan is our health reporter. That's Julie good. Patterson is our fitness reporter. We have Scott McCain, who does a motivational minute. Um, gosh, I'm just trying to think. Paul Petit does Petit on the Street. He tends to go out and ask people silly questions. Okay. So it's kind of kind of crazy. So the whole purpose of the show and the magazine is to be entertainative, entertainative, entertaining, uh, informative. That was where the you just combined it. You I did. You know, I, new word I'm us. trying to go really fast because. Um, <laughs> It's a fast day. No, it's it's the month of May and everybody exactly. goes fast. Exactly. We need to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but that's um, that's a couple of things that we're doing. That sounds great. Do you have any topics that are coming up this week that you would want to tease people with? Uh, you know, I could actually tease because it's Tuesday and it's pretty pretty darn exciting. Okay. Um, Patty uh, went this past weekend to Maryland and interviewed Mayor Hudnett. All right. He is. Uh, Good information. Is, it's going to be an exclusive show this Sunday. Okay. Um, it will be all about Mayor Hudnut. Unfortunately, he has throat cancer, and um, not sure you know how much he will be around. He and Patty uh, were on TV quite a bit back in the nineties right. when he built Indianapolis to the to the town that it is. Well, you know, he did an awful lot for Indianapolis. Right. Built the stadium before we even had a football team, and all the other things that he did to make Indianapolis uh, a place on the map. So that is an exclusive, and this is the first time really that it's it's been um, been spoken about. Um, so that's our big excitement. That's great. For this week, yeah, we're really excited about that. All right. So um, people can grab the newest issue of Indie Boomer. It's out now. Yes. At all the CBS just, just locations. Just got out yesterday. Fantastic. And we only print every other month. Okay. So the next issue will be in July. Okay. Uh, excited to have Debbie Knox. As our oh, as our cover for uh, for the July issue, and then to go even a little further, we'll have David Wolf. I don't know if you're familiar with David yes. Wolf. He's an astronaut, astronaut, graduated from North Central High School, and another Indianapolis claim to fame. That's fantastic. Yeah, so we're excited about that. Really yes. great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Mary Pat. We My really pleasure. appreciate all that you have done for the American Diabetes oh, Association. Oh, I love too. the American Diabetes Association. You guys are great. You guys do thank great you. work. You're doing some really good work, too. All we right appreciate then. you. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> we'll be back with uh, Carol Dixon. You know, uh, when Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here, we had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. Well, we sold the old beauty, and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. And we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 Eldorado Cadillac for Margaret, only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it, because it's got those big seats and that heavy-duty suspension to support her schvelt frame. Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. Everyone knows it's easy to find first-run movies in the big theaters. But where can you go to watch your favorite classic movies on the big screen for the perfect night out? Why rent a flick when you can rent the entire theater? Call today to reserve our 32-seat theater for your next event or just stop by to see what's showing this weekend. The 14 by 7 foot screen and the high quality digital surround sound system offers all the amenities you would expect from the big theaters with a laid back atmosphere and comfortable seating of your own home. Wofford Theater at 1744 South 10th Street in Noblesville gives you the classic movies you want with a big theater experience.
Hello, welcome back to Stop Diabetes Insight. I'm Carol Dixon, Senior Manager of Mission Delivery with the American Diabetes Association. And our topic for this month is kidney disease and how kidney disease relates to diabetes. So I have with me two very special guests representing the National Kidney Foundation here in Indianapolis. Dr. Mishler, would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Dr. Dennis Mishler, and I'm on the board of the National Kidney Foundation and help uh, promote education and more knowledge about uh, kidney disease. And I work at Indiana University Hospital in the transplant and uh, kidney uh, uh, program. I'm Nikki Howard. I'm with the National Kidney Foundation as a public health coordinator. And the Kidney Foundation is the leading organization in the U.S. dedicated to awareness, prevention, and treatment of kidney disease issues. So we're happy to be able to spread our educational message today. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, why don't we start out with what are kidneys? And, and what is the connection between kidneys and diabetes? Well, kidneys, most of us have two of them. Uh, and they're there to filter the blood. Many of our organs filter the blood. The liver filters the blood. The spleen filters the blood. And the kidneys are the, the filters of blood to help control us from getting fluid overloaded or waste product overloaded. So metabolism, digestion of protein and things, there's byproducts that need to be gotten rid of. So uh, when we need to get rid of fluid, extra fluid I should say, the kidney helps get rid of it. Uh, and then every day, whether we're awake or asleep, it's filtering the blood, a lot of blood pumping from the heart down to the kidneys to filter the blood to get rid of waste products so that they go down the toilet stool and don't stay floating around in our blood. <laughs> All right. Um, and I guess there's a picture. Yes, kidneys. there we up there. We have a and picture where the kidneys are. The kidneys, are. kidneys don't work if no blood flows through it. So you see those big vessels flowing blood in the kidney, out of the kidney, and then the tubes down to the bladder, and then into the bladder, down the urethra, and down into the toilet stool. Okay. So what else? Um, how else do the kidneys keep us healthy? So it's a big deal when the kidney isn't working because it's in charge of removing waste products. So uh, if you have a buildup of waste products, it's as if the urine is in the blood. And we call that uremia, and that makes you very sick to be carrying around all those poisons that shouldn't be in your body. And as I said before, if you drink too much fluid, it gets rid of excess fluid. If you drink too little fluid, you'll notice when you urinate, boy, that looks concentrated. Mm -hmm. It's trying to hold on to all the fluid you can have. Now, when kidneys fail, uh, the blood pressure uh, or there's a tr problem, the blood pressure usually goes up trying to, as if the kidneys would think, it sends out biochemical measure, m messengers to increase the blood pressure. So in controlling salt, the kidney tries to get rid of excess salt and excess water to help control the blood pressure. And it also helps vitamin D can get converted so you can uh, keep bones healthy with bone metabolism. And then also it helps us t uh, make blood. There's a hormone the kidney makes called erythropoietin that tells the bones to make blood when the, the blood count is low. And also athletes sometimes use a supplement called erythropoietin shots, but that's cheating. Oh, okay. We haven't heard much about cheating lately no. in sports, <laughs> right, I don't no, think. No, not at all. But uh, <laughs> to raise your blood count to 20 or 18 by using this hormone, this is what you hear about. It's called EPO, taking EPO, for people that have kidney failure, that's a good thing. Athletes that take it to help get an advantage, that's cheating. So anyway, the kidneys uh, do more than we uh, can imagine sometimes until you start having a failure. Then you learn all about this. Right. So, uh, and uh, who's at risk yeah, for at risk? kidney failure? What? The number one risk for kidney failure is diabetes. About half the people that are on dialysis have diabetes. Half the people that need a transplant have diabetes. So uh, diabetes is a risk, and not everybody that has diabetes marches off to kidney failure and dialysis, but those that have diabetes need to take care of themselves, need to take care of their sugars. Tight sugars helps prevent the march to kidney failure, or at least de slow down the march to kidney failure and dialysis. <laughs> And we also need to control our blood pressure because high blood pressure after 5, 10, 15, 20 years, that increases the march 
to having vascular problems. Remember I said how much blood flows through the kidney. Well, if your vessels in your kidney have been harmed because of high blood sugars, having to hyperfilter the kidney, or high blood pressure, having damage on those uh, vessels, the filters in the kidney and the kidney themselves uh, suffer. Suffer. Of course, if you have a family history, uh, that can be a factor. Or if you're a certain ethnic group, you can have increased risk factors. So uh, we take all these things into account. And of course, if your kidney is older, you can have vascular changes just right. by being on this earth a little bit lo longer. I see it says 60 there. I'm getting too close to that. Yeah. Let's make, let's <laughs> make it 65. Bit. Okay, I agree. So, <laughs> I agree. 60 so, is, is an old once you start getting close to that age. What I notice about the risks for um, kidney problems, kidney disease, are the ethnicities because those are the same ethnicities that also have a higher propensity for developing type 2 diabetes. So it's an interesting correlation. And so that, that, that kind of goes hand in hand. Exactly. So. So uh, some people are surprised sometimes when the kidney folks come along and they start talking about diabetes, but mm -hmm. it's no surprise to us because it's the number one cause of kidney disease. Right. Well, how can we protect our kidneys? Well, uh, I see the slide. Uh, part of protection is uh, taking care of yourself, and uh, if you have a spouse, they'll eventually tell you to go to the doctor, even when you're not sick. And if you have any of these risk factors, you want to be tested annually to see how your kidney is doing. I teach my medical students all the time. If the kidney's in trouble, what do you do? You look at the urine. Good things should not be in the urine. So there shouldn't be sugar in the urine. If there's sugar in the urine, maybe there's a diabetic problem. So that's a good screen test. And if you're diabetic, there shouldn't be protein in the urine because if there's protein in the urine, it might show that the kidneys are being overworked from the high sugar and the high blood pressure and you need to do certain treatments to help decrease that, to help slow down or prevent that march to kidney failure. So two tests, the urinalysis. Is there protein in the urine or not? And uh, is there sugar in the urine or not if you haven't been diagnosed with diabetes? And then a blood test to just see how well the filter works. And so we call that GFR, glomerular filtration rate, and that tells how well the filter is filtering. So it's, in males, it's around 120 milliliters per minute this filter uh, is filtering blood. In females, around 100 to 110. But we can just do certain blood tests to tell how well the kidney is filtering the waste products out of the blood into the urine just with simple blood tests. How often should someone have this blood test? If somebody has diabetes, they should have that at least every year. Okay. But we take it case by case. A doctor can do it more often if he thinks he better, but at least if you've had diabetes uh, five years, you should be tested for this of every year if you haven't already. Okay. So a minimum of every year. Well, we are going to take a brief commercial break, and then we will be back to talk with Dr. Mishler and with Nikki Howard a little bit more. Thank you. Thank you.